finally making a video on batch rendering. So for those of you learning OpenGL or graphics programming in general, you've probably heard of something called batching or batch rendering. And if you haven't, well, you've come to the right place because it's an incredibly useful rendering technique. Now, batch rendering itself is kind of difficult to define precisely because it could refer to a number of different things and it absolutely ranges in complexity from something really simple that you could just write in a couple of minutes to something that is much greater and part of a larger system. What we're gonna be talking about today is specifically how we can batch geometry together, meaning how we can render more than one piece of geometry in a single draw call. At its core, that is what batching and batch rendering means to me. So let's break that down a little bit. What does it mean to be able to render multiple pieces of geometry in a single draw call? Why is that useful? And what does it even look like? Well, traditionally speaking, the way that we've been rendering pretty much anything right now has been we build up a vertex buffer of vertices, an index buffer with indices, and then we render that together using something like GLDraw elements. And that is our draw. That's how we get something on the screen. If we want a different object or if we want another square or rectangle to appear on the screen, we basically repeat this process. We can, of course, reuse the same vertex buffer and index buffer if our geometry doesn't change. For example, if we just want a different shaped rectangle or another rectangle on the screen in a different position and then we just use uniform matrices in our vertex shader to actually position and potentially transform that particular piece of geometry. That's great and all but what happens if we want to render a lot of things, a huge amount of geometry? Now for this video we're just going to throw 3D batching and all of that stuff out the window. We're just going to focus on 2D rendering here. How do we render a large amount of 2D quads or rectangles? Let's start off with some examples so that we can kind of understand what it is we're trying to do. Let's say we're making a 2D game. It's a 2D kind of top-down RPG and we move around the world and the world itself is made up of different tiles, grass tiles, water tiles, whatever, a lot of tiny little tiles, something like a Harvest Moon style game, you know, Stardew Valley, something like that. Now these games in a lot of cases do in fact show the view kind of from above and the camera can actually get pretty far and we might have a lot of different tiles on the screen. With our current kind of strategy, if we decide to render each tile as a separate quad with a texture, that's going to be kind of difficult. It's going to get to the point where it's just not going to perform well, because if we have like hundreds, if not thousands of tiles in our world, just being drawn one by one as, a, as separate draw calls, our GPU is not going to be able to keep up with that. Now, these days on modern hardware, we can absolutely on like a desktop computer with a dedicated graphics card, get away with thousands of draw calls. It's not as big of a problem as say on mobile or as it was in the past. So I don't want to like over overemphasize the fact that this really is an issue, but it's absolutely not ideal, especially for something as simple as a quad. If you're drawing each quad individually, that's just inefficient. And furthermore, of course, as we do add more and more quads, or maybe we zoom out the camera and we see more of that map, our game may actually start to drop frames because it's just not gonna be able to keep up with the thousands of tiles that we're trying to render. Another great example is a particle system. Now, I made a game in an hour using Hazel. I'll have the video linked up there in case you haven't seen it. And in that game, I needed to make some kind of particle system so that we could have like fiery particles and smoke particles and all of that kind of stuff. Now, the way that I rendered those particles there was just by using individual quads with transforms, simple as that. But again, what happens if we have thousands of these particles because it's a huge particle system. What if we have particles in our 2D game that also has a huge tile map with many quads that we have to render? We might be looking at 10,000 draw calls now. And to add to that, another very popular example of rendering rectangles is UI rendering. What if we're rendering text on our screen? What if there's like a quest kind of journal entry that just has paragraphs and paragraphs of text? The way that we render text usually is by rendering each character as a separate textured quad. So now we're looking at potentially a thousand like text characters on the screen, a particle system going off in the background and all of this on top of a level with a thousand tiles on the screen at once. <sighs> That's gonna be difficult to render even on modern hardware, but there is an easier way or rather a more efficient way. And that is by batching or batch rendering. In a nutshell, Batching means we batch together all of this geometry into a single vertex buffer and index buffer, and then simply draw that once. So in other words, instead of drawing one square, then another square, 
then another square, all kind of individually, we put everything in together as if it was one piece of geometry. And then we just simply render that once and that's it. The performance improvement with batching together all of the kind of scenarios that I just described is absolutely huge. In fact, I really want to actually do a benchmark of this in the future, just to show you guys how much of an impact it actually has. All right, so now that we know just how useful batch rendering is, how does it actually work? Well, let's take a look. So up until now, one quad has always resulted in one draw call, which is an issue because if we had a thousand of these, we'd get a thousand draw calls, which would be slow. Now, realistically, 1000 probably isn't slow on your hardware, but the point is a lot of draw calls is slow and we know that slow is quote unquote bad. Let's break down how we would typically render a single quad. In OpenGL, we would do something called a vertex array, which you could say contains a vertex buffer and index buffer. And inside that, we would have four vertices and six indices, which makes up one quad. The four vertices would be here, and then the indices of each triangle being 0, 1, 2, and then 2, 3, 0. That's our typical setup for rendering a single quad. And if this is our screen with one quad here and then another quad here, the way that we would achieve this is we would render everything twice. We'd render this vertex array twice with a different transform. So we'd upload a uniform matrix into our vertex shader, which is our transform. Now, what if we could somehow take these two quads and then put them into a single vertex and index buffer, combine them into just one buffer? Let's try that. Let's take this vertex array and expand the vertex buffer so that it contains two quads instead of one, with the same being done for the index buffer. So if we bring this down and look at the equivalent, what we actually have is two of these. The index buffer translates into 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0 for the first quad, and then 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 4 for the second quad. So we end up with eight vertices and 12 indices total, 0 through 7. So what happens now is we render this just once. There are no transforms at all. And we get both of these squares in a single draw call, which theoretically is faster. This of course does come with a bunch of limitations because what controls the position of this? How do we set the position of these quads? We obviously can't set a transform because that would be a uniform matrix, which we can only change between draw calls, not during a draw call. So what happens is this position is taken from the vertex buffer. The buffer has the positions of each quad. You can still apply an offset to the entire thing in the form of a transform, if you like, which is basically what we would do for something like a camera. But the position of each quad is inside the vertex buffer. As another example, if you wanted to set the color of each quad, which is something you might have done in the form of a uniform before, you can also put this data into the vertex buffer. So each vertex would contain a color value, which you could then use inside your shader. We'll explore this more in future videos. So what does this mean for quads that are constantly moving, for example, in a particle system? Well, this vertex buffer has to become dynamic, meaning that we can stream data in every frame. This is extremely important because if you're not dealing with a dynamic vertex buffer, then everything is essentially static geometry and we might not want that. So I'm probably gonna end up making a series of videos that kind of deal with this because in this video, I just wanna show you guys a really simple example from the theory that we just learned about to an actual implementation that we're about to look at, something really simple to kind of start off with. And then in the future, we'll kind of keep adding features until we can really just do anything we want, but with kind of rendering everything in a single batch. So now that we actually know this theory and we know how it works, let's go ahead and transfer that over to practice and actually take a look at some code. I'm using my OpenGL library here for this example. If you guys haven't seen the videos that I've made about that, then definitely check them out in the top right corner. To start off with, let's take a look at a super simple example of drawing a single quad. So for our initialization, we're loading a really basic shader here that just positions and shades the quad with a flat color. Then we have this float array here, which contains the vertex positions of the quad, just a one by one quad that's centered at the origin. Then we're creating a vertex array and a vertex buffer, which contains these vertices, as well as setting up the vertex attribute pointer here so that we can correctly access our vertex buffer data inside our shader. Then we've got our indices and our index buffer. Inside our onUpdate function, which runs every frame, we're updating our camera controller, clearing the screen and binding our shader. Then we're setting a couple of uniforms here, the camera's view projection matrix and a transform matrix for our quad, which in this case has a translation of zero, so it doesn't transform the quad at all. 
Then we're binding our vertex array and drawing the six indices that make up our quad. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, cool. So we have this white square here and we can move the camera around. So how would we normally render two quads using what we're used to? Well, we would simply issue another draw call, but we would set different transforms for each draw using our shader uniforms. So what we're doing is rendering the same geometry twice, but with different transforms. And so we get two squares at different positions on our screen. But how do we batch these together into a single draw call like we talked about? Let's come over here to the vertex buffer. What we need to do is duplicate all of these vertices so that we've got two squares inside our vertex buffer and then apply this translation that we've done via the transform uniform directly into these vertex positions. So you can see that these are our resulting vertex positions. And just to be clear, now we have enough vertices to make up two quads inside this one single vertex buffer. Now we need to go down to our index buffer and basically do the same thing. We need to add the indices that make up this second quad. So four, five, six, six, seven, four. Finally, we can go down to our rendering code and get rid of our second draw call and reset our translation back to zero. And instead of drawing six indices, we'll draw all 12, which make up our two quads. And that's it. If I launch this now, you can see that I've got my two quads rendering as they did before, but this time in a single draw call. They're batched together. And that's pretty much it. That's how batch rendering works. I know that this is a really simple example and you guys probably wanna see, well, how do we draw different colors? How do we draw textures? How do we do all of that stuff? And in future videos, as I mentioned, we will get into this. I am doing this little kind of batch rendering mini series. So expect like another video, maybe in a week or so. And I'll just, we'll just go on to the next step of batch rendering. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video if you did like it. And also I do have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the channel. Please help support this channel if you did enjoy this video and you found it helpful and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.